Hello and welcome to British English with me. My name is Alexander and I've just decided to record another video as I promised. And today we're going to be talking about another BBC news article. And I've chosen that channel because uh, I've been following their news for quite a long time and I know that their English is of a, a really good pattern. It's good English, plain English, um, that being the reason why I'm going to be teaching you English through that method. Now, uh, before we start, let's let me make you just a consideration. Uh, I would like to emphasize that English is written in a way, but it's spoken differently. So, basically, the reason that I'm going to be reading that text, that text out loud is for the purpose of English learners to understand that English is written in a way, but it's spoken differently. So, reading a text in English just through the reading with your eyes doesn't make any good for you. It has to be written out loud so that you can notice, your ears can notice, your brain, that English is live. English is spoken totally different. So when you start understanding that, things start getting easier in terms of fluence, in terms of proficiency in English. So, without any more ado, let's read that text from the BBC News. Uh, we're, I've just chosen that article because it's a re really relevant article. It basically says about politics, diplomacy, eco economy, uh, and stuff. <clears throat> okay, so let's start. Uh, this is the headline. So it says here, disengaging with China, not credible, says James Cleverly. This article has been published 21 hours ago. So please, uh, catch up with me along the reading. He, it's, it says, what? To observe. James Cleverly defends visit to China and engaging with Beijing, quote, where it is in our mutual interest to do so, unquote. This is by Stephen McDonald in Beijing and Kate Wernell and Damian Grammaticals in London. BBC News. Okay, let's start. Uh, Foreign Secretary James Cleverly has defended talks with Chinese officials in Beijing, telling the BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation, it would not be, quote, credible to disengage. After meeting China's vice president, Mr. Cleverly said the trip, the first by such a senior UK figure in five years, would help avoid mistrust and errors. But ahead of his visit, some UK MPs, that means United Kingdom, uh, members of the parliament from the United Kingdom. So, again, uh, but ahead of his visit, some UK MPs attacked the government's approach to China as incoherent. In recent years, UK-China relations have deteriorated. China is still the UK's fourth largest trading partner. But concerns over threats to 
to civil liberties in the former British colony of Hong Kong, espionage by China in the UK, and China's support of Russia during the invasion of Ukraine have led to tensions between the two countries. Speaking to the BBC, Mr. Cleverly said his visit was an opportunity to speak, quote, directly and unambiguously, unquote. On areas of disagreement and, quote, work together where it is in our mutual interest to do so, unquote. He said it would allow the UK to re-establish lines of communication and added that a lack of face-to-face -face engagement could lead to more opportunities for perhaps misinterpretations, mistrust and errors. Quote, I'm realistic that one phone call, one visit, one meeting, isn't going to fundamentally turn the direction of travel, he said, but added that patient, consistent and reliable communication could have an effect. That's why I bring up, that's why I present issues around human rights, Xinjiang, Hong Kong and indeed individual cases every time I have meetings with representatives of the Chinese government. Asked about China's support for Russia in Ukraine, Mr. Cleverly said the country had an interest in bringing the war to a fair and successful conclusion. I don't think it's in China's interest for that to be a perception they're supporting actively or even passively Putin's actions. Mr. Cleverly said the UK wanted to maintain an economic relationship with China, but added, quote, national security comes first, and if there is ever a situation where our security concerns are at odd with our economic concerns, our security concerns win out. On Wednesday, Mr. Cleverly met China's Vice President, Han Zheng, at the Great Hall of the People in Beijing and held talks with China's Foreign Affairs Minister Wang Yiwei. The Foreign, of Foreign Office said during the meetings he raised the case of Jimmy Lai, expressed concern about the treatment of the Uyghur people and urged China to lift to lift sanctions on British MPs. That means British members of Parliament. In recent months, both the US's Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen and the Secretary of State Anthony Blinken have visited China in efforts to restart communications between the superpowers. Since the beginning of the year, China has also received visits from leaders of the EU, that's the abbreviation for the European Union, uh, France, Germany and Spain. Former Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull told the BBC that China is on a charm offensive after backtracking after backtracking on a very aggressive approach to foreign affairs, nicknamed Woof Warrior Diplomacy. The UK-China relationship has changed dramatically since 2015, when David Cameron's government hailed the golden era. China's President Xi Jinping and then UK Prime Minister David Cameron share a pint at a pub in 2015. Pub is the abbreviation for public house. It's a, it's a sort of bar. It's a bar, actually. At the time, then-Chancellor George Osborne said the UK had 
cemented, consolidated its position as China's best partner in the West. And Mr. Cameron took Chinese President Xi Jinping for a pint in his local pub. However, since then, the UK government has criticized China for its, for its treatment of Uyghur Muslims living in the country, and in 2021, it banned the Chinese company Huawei from UK's 5G infrastructure, citing security concerns. In the same year, China banned five MPs, including former Conservative leader Sir Yen Duncan Smith, accusing them of spreading lies and disinformation. As Prime Minister, this trust was reportedly planning to recategorize China as a threat to the UK. Rishi Sunak has resisted calls to go that far. But in 2022, he said that the golden era of relations with China was over and he said attempts to build closer ties had been naive. Naive is a French word for not having the sensible judgment in relation to things, actions, etc. It means innocent. At its heart, the UK's recent policy towards China has been based on a changing perception of the balance between the UK's economic interests and its security concerns. At the time, the UK has sought business opportunities in China and Chinese investment in the UK, welcoming Chinese participation in even sensitive sectors such as civil nuclear power stations. <clears throat> but ties, <clears throat> sorry about that, but ties have been strained, have been pressed, as China has taken an increasingly authoritarian turn under Xi Jinping's leadership. The move now under Mr. Sunak's Premier Xi towards new engagement may be driven by a pragmatic business-led policy, but it has come under criticism from some prominent MPs in the Conservative Party who have warned the UK should be moving to reduce the risks associated with allowing China influence in parts of the UK economy. Speaking in London, Mr. Sunak declined to say whether he would, he would have talks with President Xi at the G20 summit in Delhi next month, but said it was sensible to discuss areas where there was common ground, such as climate change, global health, and economic stability. Mr. Cleverly's visit comes as the Commons Foreign Affairs Committee criticized the government's approach to China in a, in a new report on UK policy in the Indo-Pacific. The report describes the activities of the Chinese Communist Party as a threat, as a threat to the UK and its interests. It raises concerns that the government's strategy on China is classified and therefore not available to senior ministers. It says this has led to incoherence and calls for an unclassified version of its China strategy to be published to provide guidance to the public and the private sectors. Here we have an image from the UK Parliament. It says, ex story leader Sir Yen Duncan Smith is one of five British MPs to be banned from visiting China. Okay, let's continue with the reading. The committee also argues that all relevant ministers should be briefed on the higher classification version of the strategy. The committee's conservative chairwoman, 
Alicia Keans said, quote, the confidential elusive China strategy is buried deep in Whitehall, kept hidden even from senior ministers across government. Quote, how can those implementing policy and making laws do so without an understanding of the overall strategy? Asked on Tuesday if Mr. Clavery should be visiting Beijing, she told the BBC, it's more, quote, it's more important that we are in the room with them in stark disagreement rather than cutting off relations. However, former Conservative Party leader and minister Sir Yen said the visit was the latest stage of Project Koto. I think that it's said that way. He told the PA news agency the UK position is most terribly of appeasement. It's like we want more business, therefore we don't want to upset the Chinese too much, he said. What we end up with is that they think we're just too weak. Labour's shadow foreign secretary, David Lamy, accused the conservative government of more than a decade of division, inconsistency and complacency towards China. He said the government needed to secure tangible diplomatic wins, including an end to Chinese sanctions on British parliamentarians. Liberal Democrat Foreign Affairs spokesperson Leila Moran said Mr. Cleverly's decision to meet Hang Zheng was a kick in the teeth for those who wanted to see democratic rights in Hong Kong protected. Okay, that's it for today. I've just finished reading that article. I hope you've enjoyed it. As I promised all of my viewers, I'll be publishing videos to help you develop your English, bring it to the next level. I'll be doing that every Friday. And that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel. Feel free to enjoy the content. After all, you'll be the first to get the latest updates on that. Cheers.